Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shiva Thankamani, an Integration Technical Architect. Whenever we talk about an API, uh, more often uh, we get uh, some confusion on how to define the API. So though we are experts, uh, we sometimes have some hesitations on uh, convincingly defining an API or uh, when there is an interview question about an API, uh, we get shocked or surprised we don't have a convincing answer to an API. So in this video, I thought I can define an API and get some uh, fundamental insights about an API. And there are there are too many definitions available in the internet, but uh, I'd like to make it simple and then uh, make it understandable to everybody. Let's get started. To start with, uh, we need to understand and agree that uh, the API, website, and web service are completely three different uh, attributes. And uh, I mean, now nowadays we are using uh, these three terms uh, uh, interchangeably or we take for granted uh, uh, simply understanding web service as an API or API as a web service. But there is a clear demarcation and differences between API, website, and web service. It's not just for uh, um, answering to the interview questions. But uh, we ourselves need to know as an integration experts, we need to have some clarity. And uh, I mean, as an experienced people, when we talk to juniors or when we, uh, when we talk to people uh, who are looking up to us, we need to clearly define and help them and make them understand uh, what these terms are uh, uh, in a crystal clear manner. Instead of defining API in one line, I'm going to make it like a story, uh, like whenever uh, I start explaining, uh, you will start understanding the meaning automatically by yourself. So let's gradually uh, go step by step uh, 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 to understand more insights and uh, expertise into API. So now we have a use case called address validation. So you have uh, uh, infrastructure and you have everything uh, to uh, be able to validate the given address. So uh, assume that this is your code. So it's a simple piece of code where it uh, returns a boolean. If it's, you are you are going to say yes or no, and uh, the the method name is validate address, and you have different parameters like door number, street name, city, country, and pin code. So these are the inputs uh, that defines the address, and uh, simply you are going to uh, write a routine or algorithm that uh, gives back whether the address is valid or not. So if it is invalid, you are going to return false. If it is valid, you are going to say true. So this is the piece of code that you, are, you have written. Now let's take a look at this code. So this code is a little bit better than the previous piece of code because uh, uh, the previous slide did not indicate uh, uh, certain finer level of details, um, which acts like an interface configuration. But here we have a class, class name, and uh, uh, function name, return type, quali qualifier name, and list of parameters, and uh, which clearly defines how to invoke this uh, uh, function because it's static, so it can be accessed uh, across instances instead of uh, creating the instance, you can call it via class. Now we have come to the uh, interesting part of uh, argument here. So we have all the code and we have it, and uh, how to share it with the customers because there is no point in having uh, uh, within the local computer, but uh, it will come to use only when others start to use it. So how are you going to share it to the, uh, with the customers? So if it is Java or .NET, uh, you can package it as JAR or DLL. And uh, okay, you have it. Now, uh, how do you share with them? So you can either share with uh, them via email or you can share with them via flash drive. Okay, so you have shared it and then they started using it uh, by importing the jar or by installing the DLL in their local machine, and then they will be able to access. So uh, let's think about the drawback of uh, using this uh, method. What if there is a change in your uh, piece of code and uh, say, for example, uh, you have developed multiple versions. So say first uh, you have developed address validation only for the country India, and then you expanded it uh, uh, to be used across the world, any uh, the address can belong to any country. So if you have uh, expanded to the next level, you again, you need to repackage it and then send it to all. 
and imagine there are so many customers who are using this uh, jar and dll then you need to inform them and what if they uh, uh, forget to get your latest version so there are some drawbacks in uh, sharing via email or flash drive so how to overcome these uh, difficulties uh, uh, by manually sharing with them also you cannot uh, retreat uh, i mean when their licensing period is over or you can't ask them not to use anymore because what if they continue to use so you don't have any control over it so to avoid that uh, we have a next mechanism where uh, these uh, locally available uh, functions or features that can be transported over http so that uh, external systems can will be able to access so imagine that uh, this is a system to system level access that is uh, accessed via http so there are many more mechanisms available in order to make these uh, locally available piece of code uh, um exposed as an http uh, service so that external systems will be able to access in then multiple ways for example a java jte or php asp dotnet server so these are all the different uh, servers that are available to expose uh, dll and jar as an http service that can be externally accessible but still uh, there are a lot of questions on uh, how to secure Uh, how to do the role management and how to add them and remove them flexibly whenever we want them and uh, sometimes we might have a question of how to manage the load when there are a uh, uh, huge load uh, uh, requests coming uh, how do we manage or when there are too many requests are made in a single second the servers server is likely to be crashed and uh, also you might need to understand and get the metrics and reports of uh, um uh, how frequently the api used how many times it passed how many times it failed and also when you are when you keep adding the features uh, and you might need to maintain different versions and different people will be using different versions in different point in time and also um uh, instead of provisioning for every customers manually uh, via some system you you uh, you are thinking about uh, proposing a self service uh, portal where they go register themselves and then they access it so all these are uh, impossible even uh, if these are made available over http and uh, these are uh, because all these changes in order to make it uh, uh, within your code you, you might need to undergo a lot of testing development and uh, it's also once done you will not be able to do uh, remove it easily so these are all the drawbacks uh, when you are exposing these uh, um a custom developed code uh, which is exposed over http protocol and uh, how do we avoid that and uh, add these features seamlessly and uh, there comes the need of uh, modern api where um, it provides all these uh, uh, functionalities uh, built on top of api manager and then it provides uh, in terms of uh, uh, policies which can be easily added removed and the new customers can be added and removed easily and then you can add uh, 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 roles by uh, making different roles for different customers uh, and then accordingly make a client id and secret so these are all uh, some uh, advantages that are built in modern api and uh, there are uh, a lot of api big names that are available including mulesoft wso2 amazon aws azure apg threescale and akena so these are all uh, different uh, api players that you can uh, purchase off the shelf and then you can start using it as an api so now i we have given a complete story of uh, what's happening uh, from stage to stage and now now you, you have understood yourself that uh, uh, very easily so uh, this is an api which is a simple piece of code uh, which is clearly defined on how to access it within your uh, uh, different parts of your local machine and uh, when they when they got exposed over http uh, then they are called as a web service uh, but web service is no way related to api because api deals with uh, uh, i mean when i say api it's an application programming interface which is a piece of code or functionality that is written and available in your computer that's exposed over http so web service only helps to transport your functionality 
and then made available over the network. So it's just a transport mechanism of your functions. And finally, when we say modern API, which is which is what we call it as a modern web API, um, like uh, which is separated away from the functionality, which is uh, running in a runtime manager. So these API managers are modern uh, that uh, provides off the shelf features uh, that we talked about uh, to solve uh, all these uh, issues. Like uh, we can secure easily by adding a client ID and secret and adding roles. We can uh, add and remove flexibly by by simply uh, removing and adding more uh, policies uh, during the runtime. So you don't need to stop the server or you don't need to do the testing. So it's all seamless. And you can manage the load by vertically uh, scaling or horizontally scaling the MuleSoft runtime without even uh, touching the uh, API manager. So these are uh, uh, seamless and uh, API manager uh, not only MuleSoft and almost all the um, vendors provide uh, metrics and reports by default, which you can make use of. And also you can imagine uh, these modern APIs comes with version management where you can go and uh, use whichever the version that you are interested. And uh, old versions can be deprecated or, uh, by easily by using this API manager. And uh, so these are all the advantages of this modern API. So I would say there are four terms uh, that we can understand like uh, API, web service, website, and uh, modern APIs. So website, as you know, it's a, it's a communication between the user uh, to the system, but API and uh, modern APIs deal with the system to system uh, communications enabled over the network. Having seen all the purpose and the meaning of uh, the API web service and uh, website, so let us clearly define uh, how it should look like. So API, it's an interface or set of rules or signature integrating different parts of computer program to access the functional implementation or piece of code. And uh, let's move on to the uh, website. So website can be defined as an interface where the human can interact with the API directly by using a tool called browser. So it's a human to system communication. So when it comes to web service, it's an interface where one application can interface with another to access the underlying API. So it's a transport mechanism to make the API accessible over the network. And finally, we will define modern web API or if there is a question like what is a MuleSoft API, then it is a set of non-functional requirements managed and kept away from its implementation, which can be added or removed seamlessly without any impact on the underlying implementation. So the modern APIs are exposed as a SOAP or a REST based web service uh, in general. So these are the definitions uh, uh, which could be more appropriate. So that's about it and uh, we have seen uh, some basic fundamentals about an API and we have seen um, the differences between API, website and the web service. Hope this, uh, this is helpful to you and you liked it and if so please uh, click the thumbs up button and subscribe my videos and I will come up with more useful topics in the future. Again, thanks for watching. Bye.